Alright guys, welcome back to another Skyrim Top 5 Console Mod of the Week video for Xbox One. I promised you guys I would make a compilation video today for Xbox and another for PS4 of the best mods from the last week. So all the mods in this video were uploaded on Bethesda between the 6th of January and the 12th, which was yesterday. I don't want to do any brand new ones on today as we haven't gone over them yet in our daily mod video. But all five of these mods are the highest rated mods by you guys on Bethesda, and I also chose different types of mods so I didn't add two house mods for example, even if the two house mods were the highest rated ones of the week, so we can have a bit of variety in the videos. Also as I said this is a compilation, so these are not brand new mod showcases, these are taken from my daily mod videos, as I didn't have time to make a video today, and I thought this would be a good one for you guys to watch. Anyway, if you do like the video today, please hit the like button and share it on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit, or anywhere else, I do really appreciate the support and it helps me out a lot. Well, that's enough rambling from you guys, let's jump to our first mod. First up, we have the Alduin Demonic Mashup. Despite being a simple mod, this retexture of Alduin's skin was actually the top 5 highest rated mods of this week. Okay, so this mod is a really simple one, but it's cool. All it does is replaces the texture of Alduin in game to be a mixture of two different textures to make him look more demonic, and he definitely looks like that now, as he looks like he's coated in Daedric armor. It definitely makes Alduin look more intimidating as he should be. A simple mod, and not much more to it than that, so we can move on to the next mod. The Grand Bathhouse is an awesome player home that is both a bathhouse and an arena, located just northwest of Shard's Watchtower on the east of the map. For features, this house is an arena, bathhouse and player home with 5 levels of difficulty. It has auto sorting storage system for your items, all main crafting tables and forges excluding the Ethereum forge, so that's blacksmith forge and smelter, enchanting and alchemy, and it includes the staff enchanter as well. Adjustable water level in the main bathhouse, lights that activate depending on the time of the day, fully compatible with Hearthfire multiple adoptions mod so that's really cool, plenty of idle markers for followers to use, a dragon souls to perk point conversion system, purchasable upgrades such as bathhouse guards and bathroom we will go over that in a second, and of course on top of this there's regular house stuff like beds, storage, display cases, setting areas like dining table and thrones, and a kitchen with cooking pot and oven and much much more. The house also comes with more stuff like the grand console, this is the area where you can use the arena feature of the main bathhouse. Simply pull the lever next to the throne to make it appear, and you can do the following things once it's activated, you can participate in a fight, start battles between NPCs, and toggle certain features. Finally guys, the house comes with some upgradable features. Located on the outside of this house is a mailbox that allows you to upgrade some stuff for a fee of course, and they include a bathroom for 10,000 gold, so it's a very expensive bathroom, pet fish, which you must have the bathroom first and they cost 300 gold, more guards for 6,000 gold, and you can add some additional beds for 3,000 gold. So overall guys, this house is a really awesome one, and it's definitely one of the coolest houses we've featured so far. The size, the features, the attention to detail are all really awesome. You have pretty much everything you need with enough space for your family and followers as well. Overall, a really cool place to live and definitely worth checking out. Our next mod is a cool one, after all who doesn't want to be a Super Saiyan? The mod aims to add various attacks from the Dragon Ball universe into the form of spells. It is a work in progress with more spells being added over time, but currently there are two for the mod so far. Spirit Bomb, which takes 50 seconds to charge an all powerful attack, and Time Skip. This slows down time to 0 0.01 for 10 seconds, resulting in 0.1 of a second passing in real life. At some point the mod author plans to add Super Saiyan form as part of an independent mod from this one, and also the ability to turn your character's hair golden so you look like a Super Saiyan. Other moves will be added soon as I said, like Light Grenade, Big Bang Attack, Kamehameha, Explosion Wave and Final Explosion for example, and all of these spells can be bought from Faringer in Dragon's Reach. Next up we have Dragon Ball Transformation Pack, so we could take a look at exactly what the mod adds. Kyoken drains stamina, buffs damage and magicka regeneration, health depletes if you run out of stamina, and this power can kill you if you're not careful with it, so make sure that you have enough stamina. You can go Super Saiyan, this drains magicka, buffs damage and damage resistance. Super Saiyan version 2 drains magicka quicker than Super Saiyan version 1, buffs damage and damage resistance by twice as much as it did in Super Saiyan 1. And finally Super Saiyan 3 drains magicka and stamina both at a very fast rate, buffs damage and damage resistance far more than Super Saiyan level 2, but depletes health if you run out of both magicka and stamina. Unlike Kaoken though, Super Saiyan level 3 will not kill you, you'll revert to base form with 10 health left. 
All abilities have special effects tied to them matching their Earth stack in the show, and Super Saiyan God will be added in the future as part of a quest. Super Saiyan Blue, so when you go the blue colour, may or may not be added, it depends on whether the mod author can properly balance it, and all abilities can be gained by visiting the Warriors Memorial located south of Shimmer Mist Cave and northwest of Whiterun, and it's built into the side of the mountain. Kaioken is free, but the Super Saiyan forms can only be reached by praying at the shrine inside at a certain level, and it requires you to be level 30, and another 10 for the each of the higher Super Saiyan forms. So if you wanted to play Skyrim as a Super Saiyan, then it's pretty much possible now with this mod and the Spell Pack mod from the previous video, and we're just waiting on some cool Super Saiyan armors now to go with them all. Well that pretty much covers it for the Dragon Ball Transformation Pack mod. Our next mod is called Imer's Edge, and it's an awesome looking weapon. This is a one-handed steel sword with a silver hilt. The sword is craftable at the forge and temperable at the grindstone. It has the same weight as a vanilla steel sword, and has the same damage and value as the vanilla ebony sword. Overall there's not much more to say about this one, other than it looks really good and it's definitely a big improvement from the regular steel sword. Our final mod is a really nice immersive one called Skybirds. One of Skyrim's most immersive mods, real flying interactive perching bird NPCs for Skyrim. Imagine real actor birds that don't just stand around, mutely, doing nothing much, but rather ones that can hop about, chirp, sing and actually fly away as you approach them. Birds that can land or perch dynamically, whatever they choose, on logs, rocks, shrubs, signposts, fences, walls, farmhouse and more. Birds that will build nests in trees, where they will retire to safety at night and in bad weather. And of course, they can be hunted for their useful alchemy ingredients. Well, wonder no more because that's all the cool things that Skybirds adds. So here is a list of all the actual features that you get with the mod. New fully animated bird actor models, Blue Jay, Cardinal, Tree Sparrow, Wren, Crested Lark, Brown Chested Martin, Green Woodpecker, Red Headed Woodpecker, Domestic Goose and also White and Barred Chickens. Most of the birds can hop about, perch on many objects and fly dynamically. Each bird has custom actor sounds, they sing, chatter and call out to their flock just like real birds do. They're fully interactive, the birds can be killed, they will fly away from predators and they can build nests and trees. The mod adds in sounds to the vanilla hawk, the birds will retire to their nests at night or in foul weather, the birds will become silent during player combat, the birds can perch dynamically on many objects such as trees, logs, plants, rocks and signposts, 20 new alchemy ingredients can be collected from dead birds, and finally the mod fixes various bugs related to vanilla hawks, chickens and blackbirds, for example unkillable hawks, clipping chicken feet and more. Overall this mod is an essential immersive mod in my eyes. The lack of birds in the game or bird noises is one of the main things that separates the game from real life. You can't go outside in real life and not hear birds, at least not where I'm from, so it's really a good mod and definitely worth downloading. This mod adds dozens of additional vanilla fleeing red winged blackbird flock, special effects throughout the game with new sound effects, as well as more hawks along cliffs, tundras, forests and mountain ranges, and more bats in dungeons. The mod also has some additional features which are basically fixes to some of the vanilla bird meshes, vanilla bird sounds, and some of the in-game bird scripts as well. The Birds of Skyrim mod adds a wide variety of non-flying birds around Skyrim, as well as some flying seagulls and crows. All birds will sing, chirp or cluck during daylight hours, while the rooster will crow at dawn and sunset. Seagull sounds markers have also been placed in the Solitude docks, Daintly Slowed and Wreck of the Brinehammer, for added ambience. Most birds will run a short distance away if you get too close to them, so they should no longer block your path. If you're looking for any of the bird locations, then it gives you a list of all the locations where you can find some of the new birds. The bullfinch can be found outside the farms in Windhelm and in Dawnstar. Crows can be found outside the College of Winterhold and in Windhelm. Eurasian Jay found outside Falkreath. The Kingfisher found near inland water sources, for example the water just beside Riverwood. Oyster Catcher can be found northwestern coast. Pheasants mostly found in the wilderness between Riverwood and Falkreath. Pigeons can be found inside and around cities like Markarth, Rift in Solitude, Whiterun and Windhelm. The Wood Pigeon can be found in Falkreath and outside Markarth. The Pine Thrush is found in the Rift area. Sandpipers are found in the swampy areas of East of Solitude. Seagulls are found in the dock area of Dawnstar, Morthal, Solitude and Windhelm. They're also found in the wild along the northern coasts. The Red Grouse and Ruffed Grouse are found in the plains between Whiterun and Rorikstad. Sprouse Grouse are found beside the wilderness between Riverwood and Falkreath. The Semi-Coloured Grouse are found in the border area between Snowlands and Drylands. I did look for this one for a while but I couldn't find it. The White Grouse is found in the wild in snowy areas. Hard to find, they're rare and they blend in with the white of the snow. The Snow Bunting are found in Winterhold. Sparrows are found in different places around Skyrim. Ravens are mostly found east of Whiterun and you can also find them in graveyards. Roosters are mostly found in farms and baby chickens can be found in Riverwood, Iverstead, Solitude Farm and Whiterun Farms. 
So overall, all three bird mods are definitely worth adding to your game, as they are one of the better immersive mods to be added to consoles so far, and they don't really conflict with any other mod, and their file sizes are relatively small, so you don't have much reason not to add the mods to your mod library. Well guys, there we have it, five of the best mods of the week, and uh, we had slightly more than five, as the birds mod actually counted as three separate mods, and we had two Dragon Ball mods together as well, I thought they were worth putting together. If you enjoyed the video though guys, like, comment and subscribe, I'll be back later with another five best mods of the week, for PlayStation 4, and that's coming out later today. Until then, have an awesome day, guys, and I will see all of you guys later.